ladies and gentlemen i wanted all of you to see this video because even if i spoke to you for 10 hours that piece of evidence is authentic no one can dispute it no one can say that zaharan conducted this attack to change government you can see the deep ideology in him his ideology as the honorable minister said does not reflect islam i myself have read the quran every chapter of the quran starts with the word mercy rahmatullah so but it is also the reality that this ideology has come to our country to sri lanka and if we do not address this ideology if we do not build a terrorist rehabilitation program of those who are currently in custody when those people are released they will go and spread the same ideology that zaharan spoke of the same terrorists will go and infect others with that ideology not only that zaharan and his group will be hailed as heroes they will join the terrorist iconography if we take the tamil tigers there are a few tna mps who still go to the northeast and go and worship anton balasingham will go and worship captain miller the first suicide bomber fortunately we had a very effective terrorist rehabilitation program minister mentioned the precise number and i want to tell you that we need such a program i am i am very disappointed with the current government and with the previous government four years have passed we have not yet built a rehabilitation program honorable minister is here honorable speaker is here honorable attorney general is here and justice of our supreme court is also here and there are many muslim leaders here it is in your interest to build such a program because if you do not build such a program we will have another attack this is the message that i want to give you i have served in iraq i have served in afghanistan i have served in libya many conflict zones i have interviewed hundreds of terrorists that is the only thing i did in my life and wherever governments did not build effective programs terrorism surged i want to ask very respectfully our honorable attorney general to reflect on this similarly i want to ask our honorable foreign minister ali sabri whom i respect immensely because i had worked with him when he was justice minister he did what our judicial system did in 30 years he did it in just 2 years is a remarkable leader so i think that this program we should get this going can we have the first picture so let me share with you another two dimensions the terrorism here did not emerge organically from the muslim community the islam in this country has been described throughout history as idyllic form of islam idyllic means a very beautiful form of islam meaning islam in sri lanka grew with buddhism with hinduism with christianity even if you take the two suicide bombers ilham and inshaf ilham is the shangrila bomber inshaf is the cinnamon grand bomber their father who is the head of he was the biggest spy trader here he gave donations to buddhist temples but his sons are not like that the sons were radicalized by the same ideology so we need observatories mosques and madrasas should become observatories to monitor 
radicalization. Law enforcement, military and intelligence can't fight this threat. I can tell you that. 90% of this threat in the exclusivism phase and the extremism phase should be fought by ACJ, should be fought by DMRCA, the Department of Muslim Culture and Religious Affairs. ACJ is the all on Jamiatul Ulema, the main council of religious theologians. They have eight to 9,000 clerics. And there are many Muslim elite leaders here. It is a battle that you have to fight. It is a battle you have to fight to protect your faith from being misinterpreted by, by Zahra. It's a battle that you have to fight to protect the Muslims, the faithful. Because if you don't do that, what is going to happen? This distorted ideology, where Islamic concepts are being deliberately misinterpreted or misunderstood, will be circulated. And it will indoctrinate the current generation. I want to address one other point. Honorable Minister and I are friends. Minister may disagree with me on this. The Honorable Attorney General will disagree with me on this. I do not know the stand our Honorable Speaker will take, but I think it is only right that I share with you terrorism is a vicious byproduct of extremism. When the ideological extremism grows, a very small percentage will become terrorists. But how does one become an extremist? So, how does one become extremist? It is called exclusivism. And I will share with you that in Mahavir Gardens, on the day of the East attack, a woman called Fatima Jifri exploded herself. She was pregnant. I personally investigated this case. And she brought her two children also with her. She detonated. Unborn child and those two children. Her husband was the Shangri-La bomber, Ilham. Ilham specifically requested the bomb maker, a man called Hastun, who is the bomber of the Katuapitya church. He is the CTO of Zahran's organization, the technical officer. He is the bomb maker, very bright, but radicalized, Hastun, to make a special bomb for her, because she believed that she will also go to heaven with her children. She didn't want to leave the children behind. I have reviewed the documentation of her parents, Fatima Jifri's parents. They had such a brilliant relationship with the Buddhist temple, with the Sinhalese. And Fatima Jifri herself was indoctrinated by Ilham, the Shangri-La bomber, that you should not make any donations to non-Muslims. So I want you to know that it is the ideology that is the driver of terrorism, not only here, everywhere in the world. It is not only with regard to Muslim groups. As a Buddhist, I have studied many other groups. The most dangerous Buddhist group that engaged in violence is called Om Shinrikyo, led by Soko Asahara in Japan. He manufactured Sarin, he manufactured VX, and a number of other agents even anthrax, used the sarin in the Tokyo subway. Buddhist group. If you look at Viratu, who was unfortunately invited to Sri Lanka in Myanmar. Again, what did he do? If you look at group in India, the group that killed Gandhi, a Hindu extremist group. If you look at the Jewish group that killed their head of government, Kakkahane group. If you look at a Christian group, Lashkar Christus, the fighters of Christ, I interviewed the women's wing of that group called Brigati Kupu Kupu, the butterfly brigade. Beautiful women, but what do they do? They go and attack Muslim villagers. They once attacked 
madrasa and killed everyone from a six year old child to an 80 year old man. One of the attacks that enabled Zaharan to convince the bombers was the attack that took place on March 15th, 2019 in Christchurch in New Zealand where a Christian extremist called Brenton Tarrant he opened fire and killed 30 plus Muslims, worshippers and injured equal number. So all faiths have been misinterpreted from time to time. And if you look at the very origins of Zahran's radicalization, I want to share with you that Zahran's radicalization started when a man called Naufa came to Sri Lanka. This Naufa was Zahran's senior at Zahran's madrasa in Katankudi, the Fala madrasa, where Zahran was expelled by the madrasa for his extremist views. And Naufa, who was Zahran's so this is my discussion with Naufa and I want you to know I presented Naufa a book about religious space. It is a treasure. We have to guard our religious space from infiltration. The reason I want you to see this photograph is I want you to know and I want to appeal to our AG. I want to appeal to our foreign minister. Don't lift the ban on radical foreign preachers. I know such a request was made to the president. Under no circumstance should it happen. Because both Naufa and Zaharan were radicalized by a preacher who came from India, a man called PJ. And Zaharan started to speak even like PJ. Fortunately, on his sixth visit, the Indian High Commission alerted the Sri Lankan government and he was not permitted to enter Sri Lanka. If you want to create another Zaharan in 10 or 20 years, then lift the ban on the foreign preachers. This is number one. The second person I spoke to was Zaharan's wife, Hadia. And I want you to see that picture as well in a few minutes. But I want to share with you, Hadia was a classic wife. Wives always listen to the phone calls of their husbands. Sometimes when the husband go to the washroom, she will scan and screen the phone also. The Honorable Attorney General is looking at me as if I am revealing a state secret. <laughs> but I must share with you, Honorable Attorney General, of all the inmates I spoke to, she was very precise in what she said. She never told a single lie. So I want to thank our government, our court system, for having released on bail. It is true that she didn't inform the state of that Zaharan was planning these attacks. But she told me several times she wanted to leave Zaharan. Zaharan said, I will kill you and kill your family. So I want you to know that this is Hadia. Hadia will explain what happened. But there are two things that Hadia told me that struck me. One is that Zaharan had a very hard time recruiting Muslims. Because Muslims in Sri Lanka are Sri Lankan Muslims. They didn't believe in that IS ideology. Zaharan struggled very much to recruit those nine bombers. The second message that Hadia told me is that Zaharan constantly clashed and continuously with other clerics. So I want all of you to know that the Muslim clerical community of this country, they are not the best educated. So the Muslim secular leaders, 
including sec the secular leaders here, should work very closely with ACJU and with the clerical establishment to ensure that these projects in rehabilitation, in community engagement takes place. Not only that, I would like very much to see our Honourable Minister and our Honourable Speaker personally make the case to the President to create a Presidential Council of Religious Harmony. We are the Archbishop, we are the Hindu leaders, the Buddhist leaders and the Muslim leaders meet once a month to resolve these difficulties. Otherwise they will snowball and will become a bigger problem. But this must be done immediately. Because in every country where it is multi-ethnic and multi-religious, there are always disputes. Darga and Digana happened. Why? Because it's an automobile accident. But it snowballed into violence. Of course, it was exploited by religious entrepreneurs who divide communities. It is the same in the Northeast as well. Even among the Sinhalese, especially among the Sinhalese, I want to share with you that there are people who believe in Sinhal exclusivism. But if we are going to build that one Sri Lanka, then we have to have inter-ethnic and inter-religious communities everywhere. In fact, we should have a harmony center in every district. In every school, we should have a harmony club. I see Dr. Harshalas, the gateway CEO. This should be your dream. Don't wait until someone else does it. You have been gifted with such a good brain. You represent the private sector. The most brilliant people are not in government. I know this because I was in government for one year. People in my office, at four o'clock they run away. And I told them, don't go home. Then I created a group, a team that worked with me till about one or two in the morning. Then I received a letter, don't do this. So I want you to know, private sector should be involved. So the community organizations, the educational establishments, the religious institutions, the media, the digital institutions, they all should play a role. Counter-terrorism is just 10% of the fight military law enforcement and intelligence. 90% should be a community effort. Let me, I want to also share with you one other picture, only one other picture. The head of the military wing of ISIS or the Islamic State military wing leader, I debriefed him also. His name is Milhan, lab technician, very interesting. Again worked in the Middle East, brought the ISIS ideology here. Milhan, he is the only one who is handcuffed. I asked the policeman, can you remove the handcuffs? They said, no sir, too dangerous. Because this team already stabbed one policeman 30 times. I asked him why you didn't just stab him once, he would have died by 30 times. They stabbed two policemen in Vaunatim, 2018. Milhan and three others. I spoke to the others also. They wanted to take firearms from them. And Milhan's, before he did the East attack, before the East attack was done, Milhan went and attempted to kill another Sri Lankan. And that man's name is Thaslim. So Milhan went to Thaslin's house. I asked Milhan and he shared with me. They first surveilled the house in Mavanella. They went to Thaslin's house. The plan is to keep the weapon on his head, shoot, kill him. Why did they go to kill Thaslin? Because in December 27th and 28th, four Buddha statues were vandalized at the instructions of Zahra. The Mother Mary statue was vandalized before that. Ganesh statue and Kataragama statue was vandalized and the Mother Teresa statue was vandalized. 
but government didn't act fast enough. Government should have acted in lightning speed. They didn't. Shouldn't have waited. This was December 2018. Easter attack is April. Easter didn't come overnight. There were so many incidents. So Thaslim, when Milhan went to Thaslim's house, came in a motorcycle at night, Thaslim was sleeping. I went to Thaslim's room. I asked him, explain to me what happened. And the gunpowder was embedded in Thaslim's skull. So the doctors performed multiple surgeries, replaced his skull. Just want you to see Thaslim for a moment. Taslim, because of Taslim, a major terrorist attack was prevented because Zahran's initial plan with Naufa was to mount attacks in every district. Every district. Taslim worked with the CID team and they went to a place called Vanathavillu. I have publicly not mentioned this before. And government has not, but I'm going to do it now. The terrorist training camp that Taslim was able to identify where Zahran, Naufa and others were is in Vanathavillu. And in January of 2019, four months before Easter, this camp was detected. That is where Zahran manufactured explosives. I have explained in this book that the Vanathavillu training camp was named the Abu Sure, the Shahid Abu Sure training camp. Abu Sure is the name of the first Sri Lankan to travel to Syria and Iraq, January of 2015. But January of 2015, 32 Sri Lankans went to Syria. And when that happened, the then Minister of Justice, who is also the current Minister of Justice, Vijaydasa Rajapaksa, told in Parliament about this. Why did Vijaydasa Rajapaksa tell this in Parliament? Why did it happen? Because the then government received 337 intelligence reports about Zahran, about radicalization, and about ISIS. But government would not act. I repeat, from 2015 January until April 20, 20th, 337 intelligence reports mentioned Zahran, ISIS, and radicalization. But the leaders didn't act. That is why the courts, the Sri Lankan courts, took that decision to find them. I would have wanted them imprisoned as well. President Maitripala Sirisena was going to come here. But he decided just a few minutes before it started not to come. Maybe someone gave him intelligence that I was going to say this. But I want you to know, elect smart and intelligent leaders. Look at Ali Sabri. Look at Khadirgam. We need intelligent leaders. Can't have fools. If you elect fools, this country will be destroyed. It will be damaged. So I want to conclude my presentation by sharing with you Easter attack was not an intelligence failure. There was an abundance of intelligence. 
but it was an operational failure, a failure to act. A failure to act. And what did it do to the country? It damaged our country very gravely. Today, there are people, including people who are here, every day they suffer. Every day they suffer. I want to share with you one lady whom I respect immensely. Her name is Dulcy. She's here. She had, she's an American of Sri Lankan ancestry. She came to Sri Lanka with her son, Kiran, extraordinary bright young man. She lost Kiran in Cinnamon Graham. So my concluding message is don't attack a community, don't attack a religion. All religions came to civilize humanity. Of course, religions have been constantly distorted and misinterpreted by those who have political interests. The terrorist training camp, Abu Suray training camp that Taslim helped to uncover. If Taslim didn't do that, we would have had attacks in every district. After that, Zaharan moved to a safe house in Katwapitiya, where he can see the church. He moved to another safe house in Keselvatta in Panadura. He trained his people in Arupala in Kandy in a safe house. He trained his people in Nuralia in Hambantota and in Katankur. He was able to do this very effectively because government did not act. It's a, Easter Sunday is an operational failure, not an intelligence failure. I can assure you I can assure you, I have another document, just one document that I want to show you. But I will describe the document to you. The flow of intelligence on this problem is very comprehensive. Very rarely will any country have so much of intelligence of a pending attack. But the political leaders didn't act. It is a political failure. So I would ask our Honorable Attorney General to reconsider the lifting of the proscription, the lifting of the banning of those organizations. I know government has already done it. And I will take just a few minutes to present to you why I am asking you not to do it. If you look at Hastun, the man who made the explosives, and his wife, Sara Jasmine, she was a convert. Her original name was Pulastini Mahendra. I have interviewed her family as well. They were radicalized by the Sri Lanka Tauhid Jamaat. But government of Sri Lanka has delisted this group. A fatal mistake. A fatal mistake. A group of leaders go and meet the president. Tell him, I will give you votes. I will give you, we can bring more money. Don't do it. Second group, all Silon Tauhi Jamaat. Nilam was a member of that group, the first foreign terrorist fighter to go. So I believe that we must take a position at this point in Sri Lanka. The foreign ideologies that has come from overseas created a very fertile ground for recruitment. No local or traditional Muslim joined Easter Sunday attack. Asad Sali, who is here, I know you don't like me. Am I right? You must tell the truth. But I want to tell you that he is one of the first people 
who asked, why is government not taking action against Zahra? Am I right? You gave a television interview, right? So, you were governor at that time of Western province. 2017. Muslim community members informed government. Even ACJU has informed the government to act. Arkham Nuramit, the Secretary General, he is fully aware of this. I have discussed this with you. It's a political failure. It is not lack of intelligence. It is not lack of Muslim community informing government. So I would very much like to see this meeting galvanize all of you to play an important role. We are very fortunate at this meeting we have the Honorable Speaker, we have the Honorable Foreign Minister, we have the Honorable Attorney General, we have Justice of the Supreme Court, Yasanta Kodagod, who is a national security law expert, and many other legal experts, Nirin Pulle. And look at, of these eagles, Minister is a Muslim, Attorney General is a Tamil, Nirin Pulle. This is the Sri Lankan spirit that has to be maintained. If we don't do this, that beauty of Sri Lanka will disappear. Sri Lankan spirit will diminish. So I ask all of you that the ideology that was presented in this video is not organic to Sri Lanka. It came from overseas. Control the foreign preachers. If a radical preacher comes, put him in jail, confiscate his assets. If extremist books are brought here, take firm action. When I was in government, I asked the NIA, the National Institute of Education, the bosses to come, call for a meeting. No one told me to do it. Even the president didn't ask me to do it. I did it. I told them, you remove all these extremist books. I said, otherwise, I will ask the police to investigate you. So I want you to know we should take firm action against creating that favorable environment to spread extremism. Because terrorism emerges from that environment. Let me now open this audience. You can ask me any questions you want.